have a mess. We took out a big uh, breast cancer and did immediate reconstruction. And I want to do a little video regarding anesthesia. Stephanie is one of the world's greatest nurse anesthetists. Um, and you thank, are. Thank you. You are. Thank you. What a wonderful person. And I, and I want to pick your brain a little bit uh, for the benefit of those looking for a career in healthcare about being a nurse anesthetist and what some of the, what the training is like and what some of the challenges are of actually, of actually um, being a nurse anesthetist. So, so first of all, what's the advantage or disadvantage of being an anesthesiologist and having an MD degree versus being a nurse anesthetist and having a CRNA degree? Well, I would say one of the major differences is that CRNAs have a nursing background. So we have, we are bachelor prepared nurses and we have to have at least one year to two years minimum experience in an ICU setting, whether that's cardiothoracic ICU, general ICU, pediatric ICU, whatever. Um, whereas anesthesiologists, MDs, go into medical school without any bedside experience, I would say. Well, it's not so, a requirement. It's not a requirement. Yeah. Um, so I would say one of the major advantages of being a CRNA or going through a CRNA program is having the bedside um, mannerism, the nursing experience. The nursing experience. Okay, that's a Absolutely. good one. And is the length of the training longer or shorter, more rigorous, less rigorous? You know, that's a good question. Um, you know, a bachelor program is four years, and then you have to do a year to two in the ICU, so it's another two years. And then the anesthesia programs vary. My program is 30 months, I'm from Philadelphia. There are 24 month programs, there are 36 month programs, and now the programs are doctorate programs, whereas mine was a master's program. So they're a little so bit it's longer. Probably pretty close. And probably eight years. And an so. awkward question, but are are you going to make more money or less money as a nurse anesthetist? Compared to an anesthesiologist. Compared MD, to an MD anesthesiologist. Our salaries are less. Less. Okay. Less. You would say by half or ten percent or that's people a want good to know. question. It's, um I don't know what the I think it's it's is, actually you know? closer and closer. It depends on where you work it's, as a it uh, does. anesthesiologist. It and so you can traditionally I would say it's a good uh thirty percent less as a nurse in That's probably a fair and but now I think that number is getting closer together. So now what about lifestyle? Is it is it um, is it something that's conducive to uh, having outside interests a lot? Do you, is it something you carry around all the time? You're worried about things. It's. I will have to say this is my dream job. I am so happy with the decision I made to become a CRNA. Um, I love the schedule that it that it gives me. It's ten thirty and I'm done for the day. I'm gonna go home and enjoy. Mm -hmm. the California weather here um, but you know what this is just the the nature of the practice that I work in you know you can work in a hospital setting and work from seven to five three or four days a week so you do so it, it just varies on what kind of facility and is it the sort of thing that you um, I don't know if this is something that students and trainees think about but is it it, it is a thing where I as uh, a surgeon, for example, I know myself and most surgeons carry things home with them. And if you have a patient that you can't figure out the problem or there's a severe complication or just a tragic case, it's the sort of thing that you can't just let go of when you walk out the, walk mm -hmm. out the door. Is that, is that a thing in I think, as a nurse anesthetist? I think similarly, like if we have a patient, we have a complication or something happens, you know, of course you carry that around with you. And I always like to follow up with my patients. Well, what's the worst complication that you've seen? Well, I would say, I would say <laughs> death. I know another <laughs> you know, I would say So people you know, can die in the operating room. You know, it's kind of the nature of the medical field is that you're gonna yeah. have patients that yeah. you do everything you can for, and it's just sometimes. And, and you have instances you know where you caused some problem. Of course, but you know, the important thing is- You made a is, judgment call or that was wrong or that can, that can happen, hopefully not too often. But, but from what I've learned, 
I would say the important thing is, is to recognize if you've made a mistake or recognize a problem and try to figure it out with yeah. you know, your and, team and, and don't ignore it yourself. and be honest with yourself. Yeah. So now, how is it um, in the operating room when you're actually working and you're, you're over here operating all this complicated machinery and lots of dials and gauges and tubes and all kinds of things that people can't see, but in that cart over there, there's about 300 different medications and they all have a different dosage mm -hmm. and, and most of them can really hurt somebody badly if you give the wrong dose or you give the wrong medication at the wrong time. Is it a stressful uh, job? Uh, you know, sort of while you're doing it? Is it is it something where you're like on the precipice all the time or you're just kind of easygoing and... You know, it can be very stressful, but I think that if you are vigilant and you, you know, you prepare well, your which, case... Tell us, tell us an example of a situation in the operating room that's stressful. I think anything unexpected. You well, know, tell, any, us something any that sort actually, of, tell, tell us something that actually happened. For example, happened. if you're doing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy and the surgeon puts the, thro the trocar through the abdominal aorta. The trocar is a, <laughs> is a hollow tube that's sharp on the end, um, or maybe trocar is solid, and it's sharp so it can go into the belly. So he puts it in and it puts goes... puts it in and it, he goes through the abdominal aorta. That was very stressful. <laughs> And things got really busy. The, the aorta but, is the largest blood vessel in the body, obviously. Um, it but, takes about less than a minute to bleed to death from that. But um, luckily, you think of things. You and think how did that turn out? She, she survived and we got the gallbladder out. But, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you, you have a plan A, B, and C, and you try to think of the worst case scenario. Like, what can happen next? Mm -hmm. Or, like, what's the next mm -hmm. thing that can happen? And just always be prepared, is, is what I would say. Yeah. Be prepared. And what's the most satisfying or gratifying uh, uh, episode that you've had in recent days you can think of? You know, when my patients wake up happy and they just say thank you. Thank you. I was so scared to go to sleep. Thank you so much. You made this so easy. You know, that's just always makes me feel really good. And do you care if the surgeons say thank you? Or yes, I do. <laughs> I do. Of course. I, I try of to course. say thank you. And of course. If you're actually uh, uh, having surgery, or you, you need surgery, or you're even having a colonoscopy or something screening like that, and you're worried about anesthesia, you should know that whether it's a MD anesthesiologist or a nurse anesthetist, that these are individuals who take their role very, very seriously. And if you get the impression that that person who's going to put you to sleep is not taking their role very, very seriously, you should Speak say, up. stop. Speak up. I don't want you taking care of me. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You, you, it's your body and you have a right to tell people you want, to, you, know, you want them to take care of you or somebody else. So fortunately, that is not necessary very often and I'm very blessed that I have uh, nurse anesthetists and MD anesthesiologists that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis that I appreciate very much because their role is critical in allowing me to do what I need and want to do safely and making the experience not only safe, but hopefully pleasant for the patient so that I can accomplish the, the goal that I have for the surgery itself. I want to thank you for uh, letting me interview a little bit yes, yes. about this. I think our, the people that follow our channel really are interested in these um, the other roles within you know, the world of surgery that, that are open to them and, um, and want to learn something about it. So I really Anytime. appreciate it. Anytime. Happy to help. So we will see you later, direct from Arata Land. Have a great day. Thank you.